Welcome back, friends, to Studio P, a.k.a. my dining room. It's so nice to have nobody here except one guest who's from my area that we followed each other on Instagram for quite some time. He makes way cooler looking content than I do. So I welcome that. to the show, Coobs. Hello. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, nervous, but <laughs> Yeah, you rode your mo motorcycle over here. I did. It's uh, it's, it's kind of a wild time to be alive. It's Yeah. Cute. What's well, it's February now. February it's February 2nd. 2nd and it was like 30, but I mean, it's been like 40. It's been like, well, the day, two days ago was 50, which is crazy. The forecast doesn't have a day um, below freezing on the 10 day forecast. It's supposed to be, yep. It's supposed to be in the 40s today. It was a little bit chillier on the right here. Yeah. So but. this is perfect because of uh, <laughs> the type of content you make. So right. give to give people a perspective, in your own words, who are you and what are you passionate about? Um, so my roots come from photography and just content creation in general. Um, I've recently moved into the motorcycle niche because I got back into the motorcycle scene. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. Um, however, a lot of people know me from the car scene. Um, so what I do, what I focus primarily on is social media, um, photography, video creation, all that type of stuff, making cars look pretty, making, you know, anything on wheels with an engine look pretty really. Um, but I'm also really passionate about traveling. Um, so people always kind of ask what, what my niche is yeah. and I'm like, I don't really have a singular niche. I think the best niche is you. Sure. So I don't, I, I don't ever want to pigeonhole myself to just one thing. Yeah. So if you look at my account, it's like, yeah, it's primarily motorcycles right now, but at the same time, there's still travel pictures on there. There's still car stuff on there. So really when it comes down to it, my niche is me and all, all the things I'm passionate about are cars, motorcycles, photography, and video at the moment, at the moment, right? that's the big difference, right? And, and I, I might I add think, things, you know, yeah. Well, and I think like both of us would be more successful on social media if we did niche down further. Right. But I was talking to Wyatt <clears throat> about this, uh, Wyatt, I didn't was a guest on the show. We both know right. I was talking to him about it and I'm like, dude, I don't want to have a separate account for my artwork. You know what right. I mean? And that's a big part of my life. I know it's totally different, right. but I don't want to have a separate account simply because it's way too much to keep up with. But not yep. only that, if you pigeonhole yourself and I get the point of it, but I've known people who have ran into this issue. Mm -hmm. If you do something that's like too niche, you get to a point where if you're not enjoying that anymore, where do you go? What do you do? Right. You know, because you, there's nothing, you, you know what I mean? You didn't leave any, or, you know, yeah, you didn't leave <clears throat> any doors open. And the right. whole point of like, I would assume if you do something like content creation, it has like a bad rap because people think like influencer and they have this like idea in their mind, which is kind of silly. Like all it is, is you're creating a TV channel about things you care about. Why right. is that a bad thing? Like, it's not a bad thing right. to do that. It opens the doors for you to kind of do, you know, whatever, whatever you, you want. want. Yep. You know, you have to have sponsors and whatever to make it into a business, but really you get to do whatever you want. So right. content creators, if you're not doing something that you actually like doing, kind of what's the point? Right, exactly. And it's, I've, I'm in like a million creator group chats and stuff like that, whether it's motorcycle, cars, or just in general content creation group chats, we kind of bounce ideas off each other um, or do collaborations, whatever. Um, and a lot of people that are in those, they're like, oh, you should create a separate account for this and separate account for this. I'm like, why? Yeah. Like, like you were just saying, that's, first of all, that's two, three more accounts I have to worry about. I yeah. already managed 10, 15 other accounts, so I don't want to have to worry about my own. Yeah. I just want to worry about my one singular account. I can post whatever I want on there. Yeah. Um, so it's like, I don't, because a lot of the motorcycle people that I talk with, they all have separate accounts that are basically separate personalities from yeah who they who they are yeah there's a lot of people that do um that. like so like the whole faceless thing and you know whatever if you want to do that that's fine i have nothing against that but yeah. i just don't think that for for me for the brand i've built over the last seven eight years yeah that makes sense well and it would just be exhausting so it let's talk exhausting. let's talk yep. about that brand you said seven eight years but you're you told me off mic you're 24 so that means yep. you started this like super young so let's yeah. talk more of the beginning of that yep so i picked up a camera when i was i don't know 10 or 11 probably where'd you get one uh, my dad just had it laying around the house. <laughs> oh, okay. What kind of camera was it at that time? I think it was like a Sony. It was an old Sony mirror. Like it was one of the first gen mirrorless cameras. So it was pretty nice at the time, right? I think so. Oh, okay. I don't know. I but mean, just I'm, like I have a 10 year old and the thought of I even mean, letting my 10 year old I mean, play sure, around with my cameras. Is I'm like sure. Not I'm sure it was pretty nice because my dad is the type of person that wants the nicest stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, he buys like the top of the line stuff. Um, so I'm sure it was very nice at the time. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't even like a full frame. It was a. It was a micro four thirds. Okay. So, I don't know much about tech, so but it's like crop sensor. Okay, cool. Um, so I picked that up at the time and I was like, oh, this, this seems fun. And I would go around to car shows or just it, actually before that, it wasn't even cars. It was, I would just go out and take pictures of random shit. Like walking <laughs> around your neighborhood type thing. Cause like yeah. 10, you're not going to car shows. I wouldn't no, think. Right? Yeah. I mean, sometimes if my dad would take me, but sure. Um, was your dad into cars and stuff too? 
Um, not as much as I was. Sure. Um, okay. I had I had like other family members that were into cars, and he was okay. into cars when he was younger, but he kind of grew out of that. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I've always kind of grown up around automobiles and stuff like that, so that's kind of where my passions kind of started. Sure. Um, so I picked up the camera. I would go take pictures of just random crap anywhere and just kind of mess with it. Um, I didn't even know what editing was at the time. Yeah. When I was looking at photos, I'm like, oh, that's that's a really cool photo. I had no idea that, you know, someone would spend ten hours post processing it. Yeah. I, I, I always thought photography was just like Yeah. Done. Sure. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um so I did that for a while and then as I kinda picked it up more and started looking up YouTube videos on how to work a camera because before I would pick it up and it was just a point and shoot, I would have it on automatic mode and right. you know, shoot away. Um and then once I was I think it was 15, 16, once I could start going to car shows by myself, I got my license and I could I could drive myself to things. I would go there and start taking pictures for, you know, interesting cars that I would see. Yeah. And I would try to find the owner. I'd be like, hey, is it okay if I take pictures of your car? Um, I'd like to send it to you later. What's your email? Yada, yada. Someone would say no. Someone would say yes. Sure. Um, it's kind of a hit or miss numbers game there. Yeah. Um, especially when you're a young kid, too. They're like, eh. well, yeah, what kind of car were you showing up in? What was your first car? Um, it was a Subaru. Okay. I've always, I've, I've had a lot of Subarus actually. Yeah. What's up with people? So, I mean, that's a separate subject, but why are people so obsessed with Subarus? So people I know who like Subarus are obsessed, are obsessed with Subarus. With Subaru. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's really a cult. It is. Yeah. Um, why? <laughs> but again, honestly in the car scene, it's kind of a cult in general with every like brand. Sure. Okay. Like, like you like what you like. There's the Euro guys. There's the Japanese guys. There's the but domestic guys. But even outside guys. of cars. Dude, but even outside of cars. People who don't yeah. care about cars. Like the, the kind of like the lumberjack, yeah. uh, the, the like tree life van life type people yeah, yeah <laughs> they, love like, Subarus. they love their foresters um, i mean they're i don't think they're bad car i mean i've, I've had i've driven a ton of them yeah sure. i don't think they're they're bad cars they're just i mean a lot of people are attracted to them especially in the midwest and where it snows a lot because their all-wheel drive system is so good yeah um arguably probably the best all-wheel drive six system next to audi's quattro system yeah um so obviously that's you know very good for the winter if you have snow tires i mean you're you're unstoppable in a subaru yeah so I think that's why a lot of people love them. Um, but your first one wasn't something that you needed all all wheel drive for, right? I'm assuming it was just like what it was the car you could get a hold of at the time. Yep, pretty much. So uh, so I would drive myself there to these shows, and I would take pictures for these people. Some people would want the photos, some people wouldn't, and I would kind of build up my portfolio yeah. um, for that. So a lot of people ask me like how you start getting paid to do photo shoots. You do it for free, dude. I'm like, dude, you got to do it for free for a long time. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I probably shot for free for three four years probably dude it's because when you consistently you're, if you want to do something that people do as a hobby right and you want to get paid doing it means you have to be better than everyone be who that. does it as a hobby exactly it takes a long time to get better than well that. there's this quote like, that i i don't remember how exactly how it goes but it's like if you want to make the fun job the real job you have to work harder than the people working the real jobs yeah or something like that uh, yeah. something along those lines I'm it like, is true though it's true um it's like I, i've never been the type of person that wants to sit in an office for nine hours a day. Yeah. Like I'd rather sit in my own office for nine hours a day and do my own, do, do my own thing. But the thing with yeah. self-employment is it's like you, you, you give up the, the stable nine to five, 40 hour a week thing to work 90 hours on your own. Yeah. But it's the freedom, <laughs> but it's the freedom of it. Yeah. Well, know? I guess I look at it as like a lot of the times when you're self-employed depends on what it is, I guess, but in something that you care about, Regular people go to their nine to five job or nine to six. Someone corrected me the other day and was like, there's no such thing as nine to five. Yeah, I know. Whatever. You go to your like Monday through Friday, like right. office job, whatever your it day is. Job. Yeah, your <laughs> day job. Um, but then it's after you're done with work that you go work on that thing anyways. Like, what Correct. are you doing with your time, right? Like, you yep. want to be working on something. If you're not doing anything, right. like, what are you even doing See, like, with life? I, I'm so, 100% a workaholic. Yeah. So, so when I was working my... Because I didn't... When I started my business and my photography business and then that branched into eventually the marketing company and creative agency and all that, um, I was still working a day job. Yeah. Um, I was still going to the nine to five. But then, I mean, what do most people do when they get home from those? They, right. They, they go work. work on this stuff anyways. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So it's like you're working 90 hours a week, but you would have been working 90 hours a week before. Right. It's just like changing that frame well, of so, mind. I mean, I mean, there's two sides to it. People either go home and they watch Netflix, eat some food, sit on the couch, or yeah. you go home and then you work on... The thing you care about. What, you, what you're what you passionate about until midnight, and then you go to bed. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. And, I mean, it was more not midnight, but probably 2, 3 a.m. <laughs> sure. So let's keep going. I'm crazy. But. Let's keep going on the, the, like, high school track. So you got your first yeah. car. You're driving a little Subaru, and you're going to car shows taking photos for people. Um, how did you even find – I guess – 
I see the photos of like the cars that are that you you take. Mm. I didn't know those even were in Eau Claire. Like people yeah. even have cars like that. Some How do those... you build that network? Is it just going to the car yeah. shows? So a lot of the a lot of the cars that you see on my Instagram are on my portfolio. Um, yeah, those kind of like scattered. Yes, there are some very nice cars here. Um, I'm not. I'm not going to say who owns them because yeah, it's, sure. a, it's a private collection. He doesn't, you know, want a lot of people to know that. Well, right, you know. yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, people will be surprised that there are there are those types of cars here. Yeah. Um, like a very exclusive cars that you that you would be very hard pressed to find anywhere else. Yeah, I mean, that's how I first saw your so, Instagram. It was like where that like where, where is this? Yeah. yeah, and I like knew it was in Eau Claire because right. I could recognize well, even, where the photo was. Even like but. so for me, like I I feel like I have a very warped perception on cars. Yeah. Because of I've just grown up with it. And that's the industry I work in. Yeah. Um, so when a lot of people are so surprised, like, dude, there's a Lamborghini or there's a Ferrari, there's a Porsche in Eau Claire. And I'm like, huh? Yeah. There's a bunch of them. Maybe I'm you like, know. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, to me that <laughs> like, this sounds so snobby of me, but I'm like that to me, that's like a Camry. Sure. Like yeah. I, I know as far as like photographing, as far as, cars, you know, yeah. like, like what the type of cars I know that are here. Mm-hmm. So whenever people are like, dude, there's a Lamborghini, I'm like, uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Like, so I feel like, like I said, that, that, I have a warped perception on the cars that are here. Sure. But, um, how did that build up through high school though? So you started taking photos and some people said yes. Some people said no, more mm-hmm. people said no at the beginning until they saw the photos and then they started saying yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And that slowly built. Um, but what did high school look like? We're talking like you, you were 16, you got your driver's license until you graduated high school. Did you already know, like, I'm definitely going to do photography and I want to go to a trade school for it. I just Ooh. don't want to go to school in general. Nope. I want to like do this on the, like, how did that even evolve? And what, did yeah, it look so like? I, I had never planned on this being the way I make money. Okay. It was just kind of like I, I liked doing it. Yeah. Um, it was it was a fun thing for me to do outside of school that wasn't school because yeah. I, I hate school. Yeah. Personally. Same. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's too broad. It's, it's a whole bunch broad. of stuff that I don't necessarily need or it doesn't necessarily. Right. Apply. I mean, ninety percent of the stuff they teach these days is just like. Well, because it, it's a I'm broad. They want you to be well rounded, but it's like, mm-hmm. but I don't want to be. I don't want to do a little bit. Of, like I know what I want to do, and right. I want to learn those specific things. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of it's kind of like the jack of all trades, master of none type. Yeah, thing, yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is not a bad thing. Yeah, but if you want to do something like but, what you do, you, you right. can't. I mean, you have you to be able to wear to all the master. hats, right? But mm-hmm. you still have to have one thing you specialize, right? Exactly. You know, specifically. So basically, like I, yeah, I didn't know that this is what was going to make me money in the future. It was just something I was doing for fun. Yeah. Um, and then eventually, I think it was when I was sixteen or seventeen, junior in high school. So whatever that age was, yeah. <laughs> seventeen probably, because it was near the end of. Uh, my junior year um a guy had reached out to me via facebook messenger okay and he's like hey i've seen your work i've seen you at shows before um i have this lamborghini that i would like you to shoot a video for cool and so that was like my first like big kind of break yeah Um, sure because before it would just be like i would be going to shows it wasn't like a formal thing i would just take pictures of them sitting in their parking spot yeah right um so it was cool to have someone be like hey i want to do a private shoot with you with my car and not just any, it was a Lamborghini. Well, and somebody who owns a Lamborghini saying, hey, you're 17 and I respect you enough that I want you to do this. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And so that was super cool to me. Um, so he's like, yep. So here's the time. I'll pick you up. I mean, it was a, like a sun sunrise shoot. So oh, sure. it was, uh, I don't know, he picked me up at 6 a.m. Yeah. And I was like, I don't care. I'm, I'm yeah. getting picked up on a Lamborghini to go, you know, to go do a video shoot for it and a photo shoot. So that was super cool that I was able to do that. He was able to pay me for it. And then that got me a lot of exposure. Because, yeah, okay. I mean, for one, I mean, anything Lamborghini supercar wise is going to get attention anyway. Well, and in Wisconsin. And especially it's in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, this is, so I grew up in Milwaukee. Oh, okay. So, um, so I guess I should have mentioned that. <laughs> no, I, I didn't, I didn't, I had no idea. Yeah. So, so, so there's more of those cars in Milwaukee than in Eau Claire. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of those cars here, but there's a lot of those cars in Milwaukee also. Yeah. Right. Um, so I grew up in Milwaukee. That's where I graduated high school. Yeah. Um, do you know where Whitefish Bay is? No. Do you know where Glendale is? I mean, I know Glendale, Arizona, and I know oh, Glendale, okay. Los Angeles area. Uh, <laughs> do you know like the Milwaukee area at all? Kind of. No, I right? haven't spent. Well, I mean, honestly, when you talk about like every time I, I tell like people like I'm Milwaukee. from Wisconsin, yeah. they go, "Oh, Milwaukee. Oh, Green Bay. Oh, Madison." I'm like, yeah. dude, Minneapolis is nine, 90 miles away. Like, yeah. if I'm talking about a yeah. big city and I'm going to a big city, it's Minneapolis. So. Yep. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, whenever people ask me where where I grew up, I, I just say Milwaukee too, because no one knows where Whitefish yeah. Bay is. Well, that and if you <laughs> when you go talk to people in Minneapolis or for New York, any of these cities, they don't say people don't say I live in Glendale. They say they live in L.A. Yep. Or whatever. Same way with like New York. If if you live in that immediate area, like yeah, there's Manhattan. hundreds of them. Or, right. You, you know. just say you're in that zone. People mm-hmm. say they live in Minneapolis, not St. Louis Park. Right. You know what I mean? For the most part, unless yep. you're uh, talking to somebody else that lives in Minneapolis. But. Right. Exactly. Then they yeah. know. Yeah. So anyway, so you're 17, you did this Lamborghini shoot and then kind of how did it go from there? 
Um, so after after we wrapped up the shoot, after I spent I don't know two three weeks probably editing it because I wanted it to be perfect. Um, what, what camera did you use, and how did you even have a nice enough camera when you're seventeen? It's not that, like you could rent those from the school, you know. Ew. what I mean? So actually, that was this. I used the same camera that I picked up when you're ten. When I was ten, really, it did yeah. video and photo. Mm-hmm. Wild. Yep. Yeah, DSLRs can do a lot these days. Yeah, because I, I mean, I guess when I was ten, eleven. Oh my god, I feel old now. So what those? Dude, I'm ten years older than you. Almost, so <laughs> fourteen years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like camera tech was still pretty good. Yeah. Back then, um, obviously it's it's crazy now, but. Dude, when I was growing up and I was that age, we were using the little disposables that yeah. you, know, you went to <laughs> Walmart. Dude, I, even the Polaroids are still. Are there's in Polaroids now. of me when I when I was a kid because I'm thirty. Yeah, I'm thirty three. So I graduated high school, you know, seven seventeen years ago or yeah. whatever that was, a long time ago. But anyways, yeah, even at that time, because I'm thinking about for me, like when I was graduating high school, and I think of which I guess is a similar time frame. Um, what cameras were out and were kind of standard, right? Like they were already pretty good Mm -hmm. for sure. So, and not only that, I remember talking to somebody, I forget who I was talking to, um, but they made a really good point, especially with things like camera work, right? Where Mm -hmm. it's like getting a a nicer camera is not going to make you a better photographer. Yeah. I have, I, I stand on a very tall hill when it comes to that. I I don't think gear matters at all. Yeah. So, so when people ask me like, Hey, what camera do you use? I'm like, it doesn't really matter. It's how you use it. It's how you use it. Cause, cause here's the thing after I upgraded uh, to, uh, to a new ca- newer Canon camera after that Sony camera. Yeah, I used that camera throughout my professional career, getting paid um for I don't know five years probably, yeah. and that was still a older model camera. I mean, it was still five six years old. Sure. So, I mean, the only time I think that gear matters is if you're trying to go for a certain look. Right. Like for example, like a lens. Like if you're going, if you need a very compressed background, yeah. or you know, if you need a a wider or longer focal length. Right. Sure. That's when gear matters. Yeah. But that's not going to make you a more creative person. That's not going to make you a better photographer. People just are outside. looking for shortcuts, man. They're yep. thinking, well, if I could spend the money, I'm going to get better. It's like, no, not yeah, really. Not like really. you'll spend a lot of money and the gear won't improve the photos hardly at all. However, if right. you just spent another month learning, learning that camera, it. you mm-hmm. would, you'd improve your photography dramatically in comparison, 100%. but people don't want to do the work. Yep. They want to do the shortcut. So you, you had shot this Lamborghini, um, and I'm still kind of confused as far as like graduating from Milwaukee, like you were a junior when you did that shoot. Right. So then if you kind of, I don't not necessarily blew up, but established yourself in a way where you had this one shoot, then I would think you'd be really busy and hard to even go to school, the rest of schooling. And it seems like it would be evolving to a point of like, well, if I'm doing this now, Theoretically, if I put full time energy into it, I'd be able to do it right. right away after school. Yeah. See, like I said, I didn't know that this was something I wanted to even pursue professionally after high school. Yeah. So okay. I didn't. I didn't put the amount of energy into it that I that I maybe should have. Okay. Like looking back, maybe I should have put more energy into, into it. What were you thinking you shoot. were going to do after high school? Then? So I was really big into computer programming. Okay. Um. So, uh, computer science and stuff like that. I took a few courses in high school. I really liked it. Um, my dad actually at the time was doing computer programming. So I kind of took after him also, yeah. um, with the whole computer. Nerd well, once you, once you start editing, yep. like you're spending time on the computer for sure. Right. Right. Yeah. So, so that's what I thought I was going to go to school for, yeah, okay. um, was computer science. So I, I like wanted to develop video games or whatever the hell. And, uh, so that's what I eventually ended up here for was, uh, I went to UWC for computer science. Oh, okay. Um, in 2017. And so, like I said, I didn't put the energy into the whole content creation thing because especially my parents, they're like, you're you, pursuing a real job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, my parents were like, Oh, you need to, you need to do this. You got to get a degree and right. You know, do, do adult things. Dude. When I told my parents <laughs> I was quitting my real job to open a skateboard shop, they yeah. were like, what? Like, yep. That's not real. Yeah. You know, so like my, like I love my parents, the hardest working people yeah. I know, yeah. but, but they, uh, they didn't understand at the time. Like especially with social media and everything that you well can, you got to remember they grew up in an era where that wasn't a thing. They grew yep, it and especially exist. with them being immigrants too. Like all yeah. they know is like you know the the American dream. You, right. You get an education, you go to school, get a degree, get a job. Yeah. That's that's the path. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, which is fine. You know, a lot of people do that, have a lot a lot of success for it, but right. but that's not necessarily who who I was and who I am. Yeah. Um, I didn't really want. I never fell into the like just the societal norm of I'm going to go to school and. 
work. I just don't like the limitations of it. I don't either. You know, like it puts so many, like we were talking about earlier about how, if you want to go in a different direction, you can, I hate that in uh, your traditional career path, it's set of like, this is exactly what the next 10 years of your life needs to look like. If you want to be successful in this, Mm -hmm. like I don't want to have those handcuffs on, man, I would work harder to not have that. Right. And especially too, like with a lot of corporate jobs or just, you know, normal jobs in general. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to climb the ladder. Yeah. Yeah. So what a lot, what I see a lot of people do is they, they'll, they'll start at a corporate job, stay there for a year or two, and then they go to the next one to move up and then they go to the next. So they, so they job hop. Yeah. And a lot of people might think that's frowned upon, but honestly, I'm like, that's the smart way to do it. Dude, here's my honest opinion about, it, cause I was in sales and like, mm-hmm. I definitely yeah, I did, did that. Too. Here's the thing. <clears throat> the corporation you work for doesn't give a fuck about you no you're a number right so you (laughs) should not give a fuck about them and if you're having loyalty to a corporation that does not care about you you're buying into their whole like program that they're trying to get you guys to buy into like that's they're purposely trying to get you to buy into that and you're falling for it don't fall for it just because they're making you feel guilty. It's mm-hmm. not your problem. Same way like people who don't want to quit a job because they don't want to leave the employees hanging. That's, yeah, not, your that's not your problem. It's No, yeah. the, the employer is putting you in a position like that to make you feel bad. Mm-hmm. It's not your fault if right. it leaves them high and dry. It's the employer's <clears throat> fault and it's not your job to fix that. Right. Anyways, so... You're going to school for computer science. Did you go all four years or did you, something kind of take over? Like yeah. what happened? So eventually, so I, I still obviously had a big passion for photo, video, and cameras in general. So yeah. so I came to school here and I'm like, okay, let's see what the car scene's like, which coming from a big city like Milwaukee, I was I was a little disappointed yeah. um, because I was used to super big car shows out in, out in the cities and at night. And, and ours were at like Burger Kings. <laughs> yeah, no, literally, which, which is fine. It's great. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's still, there's still a lot of really cool cars here and a lot of, a lot of cool people, but, but coming from that scene, I was right. like, I was like, oh, a little underwhelmed. Um, but I've met a lot of great people in the scene. Right. Um, so I mean, it, it, it all worked out in the end, but, um, so I came here and I started looking for other cars that I could maybe shoot. And so here's the problem. <laughs> here's the thing with a uh, car people, which like, there's, it's not like it necessarily like a diss towards them, but cause I am one of them, but they, they will not pay for photos They're, They don't like paying for photos. Most sure. people don't yeah. like, like they'll go spend three grand on wheels and yeah. tires or whatever for their car but 300 bucks for photos they think it's your privilege to no. shoot it. yeah yeah so so that's that's the problem that i ran into like for years actually yeah. and that that's the other reason why why i didn't really get paid for what i was doing for a long time because it's like i had to find people that were willing to see the value in what that i'm providing so yeah. that they can pay for it um so the problem was it's like okay i was going i can't go to these people that are like dumping all their money in the cars and just think they have a spare Thirty four hundred dollars to spend. They on do. They just don't want to spend they, it on that. Like they yeah. might, and they might actually not have the money to spend on it. But at sure. the same time, it's like, it's like, dude, you're, you're, I'm exchanging my time in this craft yeah. to provide you really nice photos or whatever you want of your car. Sure. Like the least you can do, you know. Yeah, it's um, just different perspective. <laughs> different perspective, though. Yeah. Like I get it. It's fine. So that was the issue I ran into for the longest time, until I was like, okay, I need to figure out how I can get more clients that are are willing to pay me yeah. because if I want to, you know, make this blow up and make it go further that that's what needs to happen. Right. So eventually I kind of grew out of the area here, um, car scene wise and started going to the cities. Yeah. So there's a lot more car related events up there that are happening to, throughout the summer and spring and fall. Um, a lot of, a lot more variety of cars and people, uh, way more population, just way, way more high, population, yeah, way so. more, way more people in a financial space to it's be just able a, it's to It's just a that. bigger pool to play right. in uh, right, as, yeah, as, yeah. as I see it. Totally. So I went up there made a lot of friends up there, got a lot of clients up there that I was willing to shoot that, um, that were willing to pay me for their shoots. Right. Okay. And here's the other thing I noticed too, is like a lot of the, the, the shoots that I've probably like 80% of the, the money I've made through just car photography have been higher end vehicles. Right. So. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to discount the 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 not Lamborghinis, not Ferraris of the world. I think they're still great, sure. Um, especially if you're you're pouring your. Again, you're you talking know. about people if they have expendable income that they're mm-hmm. going to spend on that. Exactly. They're the people who have those types of cars. The people right. who have the tier below that, they're yep. putting all of their available money into that car to begin with, right? And they exactly. don't have right. Whereas, like you know, some guy that's buying a Ferrari probably has right. You know, extra cash just to be like, here you go. 
Well, you know? yeah, and I, I mean, a different perspective, right? <laughs> different because perspective, you're yeah. not trying to make the kind of money that that dude's making, mm-hmm. right? He's making way, or he or she is making so much money right. that the little amount in for their perspective, a small amount to pay you right. is like, oh, this is great, a great amount for me. So mm-hmm. it really depends because even like working with sponsors for the show and stuff, like for the longest time, and I still really prefer to work with really small brands, which I do still me work too. with small brands. But the problem <clears> is they don't really have marketing budgets. And right. I get it because I don't have a marketing budget. Yep. However, that puts me in a bind because I'm like, well, but I can't, I can't do it for free. I know you can't afford it and I want to do it for you, mm-hmm. but, I, but I can't. So you get right. put in that struggle of like, I guess I have to reach out to these other people. It's right. just kind of part or of it. Or you can try to figure out some sort of exchange. But at the same time, that kind of... <sighs> Trading's fine, but you have to pay your bills but, too. Right, exactly. You can have a, a mixture of it. Yep. And see, like the, the worst thing I hate about the car scene is like when if someone builds up a following on Instagram for their car or whatever. Yeah, sure. Uh, they'll be like, "Yeah, I'll shout you out." Yeah. I'm like, "And?" Well, it depends, like, dude. You know? It really <laughs> depends. Like exposure's worth something, right? So here's mm-hmm. here's an example. If you got to have a commercial on the Super Bowl, right. You're damn right you'll work for free. Yep. Right? 100%. But that's on the far end of the spectrum. Now right. all of a sudden if you're getting essentially a commercial mm-hmm. on this person's social media, you know, page, right. there's there's a huge difference. So mm-hmm. at what point is it worth it to you? Not only that, I was talking to somebody else, and I guess I won't say who, but um, we did, we're working on videos with different people, right? Yeah. And dude was like, yeah, I would totally do a video for this person for free, but not like a bunch of times, right? right? Because right. the one time getting shout out to the audience, you're getting that exposure. Right. Now, if you're getting shouted out to the exact same audience over and over, over and over and over again, it's not really worth the exposure at that point for all the work, you know? And you again, have to look at individual, like their lives and go, okay, well me as an example, I have two children in a house. Like I do have to pay for those things. Mm-hmm. So as much as I want to do this thing for that person or whatever, there's times during the year or whatever, where I just can't afford to. Right. I mean, another good saying that I, that I love too is just clout doesn't pay the bills. Yeah, totally, dude. So, yeah. So it's like every time someone's like, "Dude, I'll I'll shout you out on my Instagram story, I'll, or I'll tag you." I'm like, "That's great. Like, you should tag me anyway to give me yeah. photo credits." But like, that's that doesn't, that's not an alternative to payment. Right. Well, and again, like I said, it's all <clears throat> it's all perspective. It depends on what it is. Yep. If they're like a mega A list celebrity, probably do it for free. Right. But it, yeah. It, right. It just depends, you know. Yep. And it sucks because people they don't their egos are fragile. Your ego's fragile. Yep. My ego is definitely fragile. Right. Where it's like you don't want to undervalue yourself, and they don't want to undervalue wanna... themselves. So then they're both overvaluing kinda, themselves. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to find the right clients. But anyway, yeah. so you did find some clients. Then how did yep. that grow? Did they kind of like? connect you to their other people in their network that had cars yeah, so that basically i mean like i I've, I've i've probably spent like less than 500 dollars overall my whole career on like advertising yeah so that whether it be like facebook ads or whatever it's it was usually facebook ads um or instagram ads but other than that the way i've grown is just word of mouth yeah um and just posting consistently and posting quality work it's kind of the only way to grow dude so yeah so it's like so i I did a couple shoots for people up there with some really nice cars and car collections and they would go to their their buddies with really nice car collections be like hey you should get this kid to shoot your cars right because he's really good yeah well and trustworthy and then it it just kind of snowballs and then you get your name out there and then you know i mean that's how you build a brand really yeah so so people kind of asked her like how do you how did how much did you spend on marketing i'm like not that much. You no, just... spending money is not how you do it, dude. That's the shortcut not... people think is a shortcut. That well, like, yeah, if work. you're like you were saying, like if you're a huge corporate, I mean, yeah, you have millions of dollars to spend yeah, on marketing. Yeah. We don't, dude. It's, it's about being savvy, like mm-hmm. looking at what people you can work with. Like, mm-hmm. how can you cross promote in different ways? And honestly, right. like the social media like algorithms, they want you to do that. Yeah. So, like anyone, if you reach out and you have like similar audiences, like size wise or whatever, and you say, and you're like, hey, let's do this thing together, and they say no. Mm -hmm. it's like dude you're blowing it because social media want like the the platforms want us to do this right now yeah and it's a awesome advertisement that neither of us have to pay for that's when the exposure makes sense yep you know what i mean yeah but it uh, yeah depends well because like for me like the 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 marketing budget is me traveling to places well it's you doing work people well that and well true but it's it's doing the work itself the work itself too right you're instead of getting paid for this thing you're putting that into the marketing of the thing so everything's a spectrum there's not like a hard this is how it is or this how it it all it's all like kind of scenario based so how did you start doing um how and why did you start doing motorcycle stuff because that's like a totally different game than what the cars are yeah it's there's two different like do you lose interest or what they come together in oh, some sure. aspects, yeah, but yeah. but they're two different. People who have fancy cars don't have fancy scenes. 
super not a supermoto. What do you even call? I mean, everyone calls them crotch rockets, but what like yeah, performance bike? Super or super bike or super sport? Yeah, okay. Uh, that specific category of the bike I ride right now, that's a super sport. Sure, but, but that, um, the people who own those aren't the same people who own Lamborghinis no, usually. No, not usually. Um, so I've always been into motorcycles. I've I've I had a motorcycle in high school. Um, also, um, I've had. Let's see, I've had like six motorcycles. Sure. Um, so kind of just like throughout the years, I'll just yeah. pick them up. Um, and a lot of them, my last one before this was actually just like a, like an $800, like piece of shit that yeah. my friend and I picked up and we just worked on and do you know what a cafe racer is? Yeah. Okay. So basically that like was that. my first motorcycle. Yeah. See, caf- cafes yeah. Are, are fucking sweet. Yeah. Um, so you, you pick up an old like seventies, eighties motorcycle, chop it up and make it, you know, yeah. it's, it's not and There's a million fast. parts for those, like yep. the, the Honda CBs and stuff. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So my buddy's got a CB 550. I had a CB 400 or a CM 400. I don't remember what it was. Sure. But we chopped it up and it made, made our own cafe racers out of it. And that taught us a lot about bikes and about how we hate carburetors also. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but you know. So I've always been into two wheels yeah. and I've always been, been attracted to, to motorcycles and stuff like that. So, but recently getting into the motorcycle content creation world, I mean, I just, I, I missed being on two wheels. Sure. So I, I actually stopped riding for, I don't know, probably two, three years. Okay. Uh, just because, I mean, it, it is dangerous though. Yeah. I mean, of course. So, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's no, there's no way to, to dance around it, but motorcycles are are the most dangerous things you could be on on the road. Yeah, of course. Um, there's a lot more things that can happen. I mean, you, if you crash a car at 60, you're, you could probably be okay. If you crash a bike at 60, you're probably dead, yeah. <laughs> you know, or right. severely injured. Right. So, I mean, that was that was a big part of it, too, is I was just, I didn't want to put my life at risk like that. Right. Especially, too, because I, I, I'm an adrenaline junkie. Yeah. So, that's, I mean, that's another reason why a lot of people ride bikes is like we... we they push themselves way too hard, dude. They push... It's it. inevitable before they crash because they keep pushing further and mm-hmm. further and say, well, nothing happened this time. It's like, uh, right. yeah. It's like, yeah, this time. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Problem and, it only needs to happen once. It's a problem. And like, and yeah. the, the one thing that, that really bothers me, though, about the motorcycle scene is just, is the amount of people that get motorcycles because they're, they're like depressed or like they're sad. Yeah, sure. And I'm like, like, yeah, I get it, dude. Like speed helps. It's fun. Yeah. It's fun, and it can take your mind off stuff. But like, don't, don't go out and post stuff saying like, "Oh, I'm gonna crash my bike into a tree." Yeah, and sure. Like, I'm set. Like, I think it's just super cringy. <laughs> like, yeah, it's hard, dude. Like the the mental health thing is just a scary thing in general. It is. Like, there's a it's a really bad time for it in the world, it but is. in America as well. And it's like it is cringy when you see stuff like that. But I guess what I always try to tell people is. Put it in perspective of if someone's doing that, even if it makes you cringe, it's a cry for help, man. Like, it is. That's yeah. what's happening At the same right time, now. it is a cry like, for help. They're looking for attention. Right. They need it in this moment. That's what it yeah. is. And even if like you know, they're pushing it a little bit fake or whatever, it's not worth shutting it down for this person where it was fake when somebody else it wasn't. Yeah. Well, so see, it's like just every time I see that sort of content on my feed. Yeah. Like where, where, where I can tell like, okay, this guy's hurting. Yeah. I message them. Well, and that's like, it. Right, like exactly. whether, whether they, you know, message me back right. and I'll be like, Hey dude, like, I just want to check. Yeah. How hard is it to okay. do that? Right. Like how hard t- is it to do that? Yeah. You know what I mean? So but anyway, so yeah, so you were riding motorcycles, but I guess my question is you, you're working with these people who have these huge car collections. So you're kind of like set now mm-hmm. set uh, as far as like you have a list of clientele, you know that you can get work doing this thing and right. it'll continue to grow. Why veer off course for that? It's for almost like starting over. Yeah, so so recently, um, I kind of separated my personal brand and Zhang Media, which is my creative agency now. Okay. So, but now they're kind of coming back together as one. Yeah. So I, I recently um, dropped a merchandise line that has my name on it and my company Zhang Media's name on it. Cool. Um. So, so basically, I I had I never thought that i could make my personal name a brand yeah okay so before my whole thing was like okay Zhang media is a separate thing that's my company but it's not it's not me you know like yeah. it's not my face it's 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 my work sure so but recently last year probably the end of last year uh, when i started getting into motorcycles more a lot of brands started reaching out to me wanting to work with me and mm-hmm. pay me to promote their stuff wear their stuff right and i'm like oh this is interesting um Especially do because uh, talking with Jaron a lot too. Yeah, I mean he's he's doing a lot of the brand deal stuff, and we we sometimes we bounce ideas off each other on on how much we should charge for this or that a yeah, video yeah. or a story. Yeah. So so it, it it's very recent to me. This is very new to me. Yeah. Being like I, I hate the word influencer. I, yeah, sure. I hate it. I don't think I'm influencing anyone. Yeah. I don't I don't need to influence it, but. 
it's just like people they have a, a connotation with the word that mm-hmm. doesn't have to exist yeah so when people are like oh you're an influencer i'm like oh, i'm not i don't want to be yeah I well <laughs> like I don't, right. I don't you like ride motorcycles word. you make cool stuff that you yeah. like from and it's like if, if people yeah. want to follow me because they like that content and like yeah and if it makes you money killer it makes me money like and so because a lot of my videos are they're either like educational or they're just like the the trendy sure like five six second clips of something yeah. of me riding my bike sure but the problem is like i i wish i could pump out those type of it the the one to two minute informative clips about riding motorcycles every single day yeah but the, it's just not possible yeah. with with like ideas and writing and editing and shooting like there's just not enough time mm-hmm. or brain power to just just do that every day so i try to yeah, sure i try to put myself on a schedule as like of like once a week maybe yeah. two weeks. well any on. job dude there's gonna be things you don't like about it right yeah. and like you, when that especially because i don't want to burn myself up because i've already burnt myself out so many times in the over the years sure yeah so and like i've had creative blocks for sure I've, everyone does i've yeah. gone through like months at a time where i'm just like what the fuck am i doing yeah Totally. Like, well, and you, and you reach ceilings too. <laughs> yeah. Right. Of like, well, you, you did went out, set out to do this thing, you go and you achieve it. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, so what's next? Like, am I looking for more supercars? Am I looking for, you know what I mean? Right. Like you kind of reach a level where I'm not saying you can't grow, but right. the growth like at the beginning is pretty exponential. Like you're growing mm-hmm. really fast and everything's exciting. Everything's right. new. And you kind of like taper off at yeah. a certain point where you're like, okay, well now what's the next exciting Yeah. And that's kind of what happened with, was, was, with my company, I did a lot of social media marketing, content creation, social media strategy, creative strategy for a lot of automotive related companies. Yeah. And then I kind of hit like, like you said, a ceiling where I'm just yeah. like, I don't know if like, it's not like I didn't, I didn't like doing it. Yeah. It's just, it got to the point where I, I reached a creative block and I'm like, I don't really know if this is what I want to pursue forever yeah if that, no not that's well not the, i mean if you're, right if you're word, no longer but, inspired and excited about it yeah then it's not worth the 90 hours a week yeah because it's like i just kind of got stressed out and i got i got burnt out and i'm like i'm not sure if this is what i want to do for like even if i continue to do it i need a break yeah totally um so i reached i reached that ceiling and i kind of sat back and i'm like okay what do i what should i do next because i still need to to pump out content yeah and sure. do something and so beginning of last year 2023 i was like okay i'm gonna try and grow my social media presence sure because i i obviously i meet and i know a lot of people that that can make a pretty killing living yeah you can definitely media. make a living doing it if you know what you're doing if you know what you're doing yeah and and it's just part of your portfolio in part general. of your portfolio yeah um so i'm like okay for the longest time my personal instagram was just me posting pretty photos that i take yeah. um and you know my friends would follow it and that's about it yeah and then my company jong media that was a completely separate separate entity yeah and that you know that was all my client work portfolio work um i'm like okay what would happen if i focused that type of energy on my own personal brand right because i spent years learning how to grow social media accounts for all these clients but i never tried it on myself right so i'm like okay let's Let's apply everything I've learned in the last six years and apply it to my own account and see if that works and it, and it it's working. Yeah. So I think I grew, I mean, I, almost 40,000 followers in a year, Yeah. which is pretty good. Yeah, um, I would say so. Uh, especially for, for like the niche I'm in. Yeah. Uh, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, you're crushing it. Um, so thank you. <laughs> so yeah, are you. Totally. <laughs> but, well, uh, not 40,000, but that's okay. <laughs> you'll get there. Yeah. One, <laughs> one day. You're almost at 20,000. Mm. We're getting close. I used to listen to so much classic rock and anyone who says they don't like ACDC is lying. I'm you're, just saying, you're dude, crazy. you're lying to yourself. <laughs> I like, I know it's like, Oh, they're so popular. Whatever. You're lying to yourself. You like it and you know, you like it. So yep. let's talk about, uh, keep talking about your personal brand though. So you decide you want to put it into your own brand. Mm-hmm. What does that kind of look like now for the most part? Right? Like when I'm looking at it, I'm seeing you on the bike and you're making content with the bike. Obviously people do sponsored content. So that like helps funnel it to right. a certain degree. But like, what is your like, it's hard to say day to day because day to day is very different. What does like yeah. a week kind of look like currently? Yeah. So a week would look like me. So Mondays I'll try to plan my content for the week. Okay. So I'll kind of sit on my computer or sometimes I'll just lay in bed mm. on my phone, like looking up, like what should I do this week? Um, so I'll kind of figure up, I'll, I'll write up a content schedule for myself that I, that I try to stick to for the week. So I'm like, okay, I need to release three to four videos or reels with, 
trending audio. Yeah. Because here's the thing with social media that we were talking about earlier is it's it changes so fast. Yeah. And if you don't post for even like a week, you're irrelevant. Totally. Yeah. Like the algorithm's just gonna be like, eh, they yeah. don't care. So I wish that I could pump out quality content that I'm extremely proud of every single day, like my my speaking videos. You don't have a staff like Mr. Beast, but, but yeah, but I don't. You know, I don't have staff. I don't have you know the time. I don't have the creative power necessarily to, right. to create one of those every single day. So all of those little, you know, eight to ten second clips that I that I post between the the speaking videos are just sprinkled in there so that the algorithm likes me. <laughs> Play the game, man. Yep, and, and I hate it. Dude, let's be, let's be re- here's the thing though let's be real be, when you're on the internet and you're doing something like social media everyone can see it mm-hmm. so it's really quick and easy for people to judge you and say oh you did this or oh you did that dude if i could like look at what you do for your job whatever that thing is mm-hmm. and i can look at your full like when you clock in to when you clock out i bet i could point out a bunch of things i think are stupid right but I don't get to watch that, so I don't get to critique it. So right. yes, yeah. with every job, we have to do shit we don't like. And <laughs> yeah. yes, is it cringy sometimes? Sure. Yeah. But like when I worked in jewelry, I had to sell credit cards. You think I like that either? Right. No. Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> I'll look back at my feed sometimes. I'm like, this was stupid. This was stupid. Yeah. This was stupid. Yeah. But you can. But you can. <laughs> but you can delete it. And the thing with like social media that's so powerful. And yes, I get it. Like depending on what platform or whatever, the platform owns the content. I understand right. that. Still, regardless, if that you know went away. Mm-hmm. You have a personal brand that you built up that you can take wherever you want. That's why it's such a powerful uh, resume for right. things. Because regardless of what you do, you can move there. People have this false idea of working for somebody else that there's like job security. That's not true. Right. It's not true. I had a friend, um, one of my best friends. We both had worked at Verizon. This was a long time ago. And he was at like the corporate store in Eau Claire doing really well. He was their top salesperson, right? right? He got promoted. This was shortly after I opened my skateboard shop and walked away from consistency, you know, like from any kind right. of security. And he got promoted to be an assistant manager because he was the best salesperson. Well, then within a month, corporate wide, they dropped down that volume of store, like a volume store dropped down from like four assistant managers to three. I'm making up numbers right now, but it was something like yeah. that, right? Because he had the least amount of seniority, his job was cut. Right. They couldn't, they didn't have another position. So even though he just got promoted for being the best person in the store, his job was just eliminated over a phone call that he had to answer in bed. So if you think you have job security, you're lying to yourself. The people who work on things like social media, I get it. Things come and go, whatever. But at least you have that asset for yourself. It is your own thing. If you fail, it's your own fault. Nobody else. You're still, you're still your own boss. Right. Nobody, nobody can fire you. Right. I guess is the big difference, right. you Except know, yourself. for me. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. But yeah, so you, you have to make content that you don't necessarily enjoy. Yep. Get it. It's the same way with sponsor content and whatever. Sometimes yep. you have to do things that are like, eh, well, that's kind of what pays for it. Right. But at the same time, though, with, with sp- going off on sponsored content is I only work with companies that I truly love and, and that, I, that I'm proud to, to represent. Totally. So it's like. I mean, you, you should see my inbox sometimes. Like, I have so much. Yeah, yeah everyone does. So much bull yeah. crap of just like random companies. Like, can you promote this? Can you promote? Can you promote our electric toothbrush? I'm like, yeah. Well, a lot of, dude, there's so much like random fake stuff too. Like yep. even people who don't have like a, a platform get messages from like, right. cause they'll, they'll have these bots or, or in general, they'll just like mass send these things. Yeah, pretty much. So you'll get to a bunch of people like, yeah, when you can work with somebody individual, which I have a gift for you talking about like an individual, yeah. uh, my friend, Tim, he owns this company, minimum wage, Tim's shout out for him. Um, do you like coffee or no? I do. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, this is from Papua New Guinea. Awesome. So that is for you to keep. Thank you. And hopefully enjoy and not just put it on a shelf as a trophy from the show. I mean, it does look it does look nice, though. It's kind of rad. <laughs> um, so you get a minimum, minimum wage, Tim's.com. Um, and he's just like a one dude in Minneapolis. Okay. So uh, he has coffee in a whole bunch of places. I think in Eau Claire now, but he's kind of expanding. But you can get uh, subscription boxes to your house. And then, do you drink beer or no? Uh, okay. You don't have a beer gut, so you don't drink a lot of beer. <laughs> occasionally. Okay. Well, I, don't, I don't drink that much, but... I'll drink with my friends sometimes on the weekends. I've been waiting to get myself uh, my own can artwork, which they said they'll do if I like just do the work. But of course, I haven't done the work. Yeah. Anyways, so I have these beers. You're welcome to them. Uh, Hop and Barrel is a brewery in Hudson. And they kind of like like being a little bit weird. Like they have like, yeah, dude, they have like wrestling matches in the parking lot and stuff. Oh yeah, dude, it's dope. So if you're ever yeah. in Hudson, like yeah. it's a it's a cool spot. My to... parents live in Stillwater, so oh well, so dude, yeah, right, exactly. Right across Perfect. the river, <laughs> but yeah, but any in, but 
anyways, like working with sponsors and stuff, like there's a way I, I, I keep saying this, but it's very true. Everything has a spectrum to it. People mm-hmm. are so quick to say something's right or something's wrong. Yeah. There, it, that's not how it works, man. There's, there's spectrums, right? And no matter how right you think somebody is, there's somebody who's more right. Mm-hmm. No matter how wrong somebody is, how horrible this thing they did is, they could have done it worse. They could have done it worse. Yeah. yeah. So it's just about finding like where on that spectrum that you feel comfortable. Would it right. be nice to never have to advertise for anything? Sure. But let's talk about this. Whatever you're wearing, even if it's not a brand, is you advertising yourself. Right. We're always advertising. So the fact that somebody advertises for a brand, especially if it's their friend's thing, what's the, you know, what's the problem? Dude? Right. It's not that big of a deal. And if I that's mean, what allows that In this day and age, we're all walking billboards anyway. Yeah. And whatever job you work for, you're advertising. Yep. Uh, so yeah, whatever. So anyway, so you have to do some sponsored content, but right yep. now your passion really is on the like longer form, like two minutes. So are you yep. what, like working on a YouTube page a lot? Cause I only know you um, from Instagram. Yeah. So Instagram is, is my main priority right now because that's, that's where I've seen the most growth. Um, so unfortunately with, so I have, I have like 72,000 followers on TikTok sure. and, I, and I, I quite literally post the same exact videos on that platform, Yeah. but TikTok guidelines are so much stricter than Instagram's is. Yeah. So TikTok hates motorcycle creators. And in general, it just comes and goes. And it, just, and it yeah. comes and goes too. So like, it's not as powerful or consistent as a company as meta. Right. So it's like, I can't, it's, it's hard to post any sort of content on TikTok of me on my bike moving. Yeah. Because they see it as like dangerous acts. Like even if I'm not speeding. Yeah, sure. Um, and like in most of my videos, I don't really speed anyway because I, I don't want to like encourage that. Encourage stuff. that. It's like, yeah, obviously I didn't buy a super yeah, sport yeah. to go to the speed limit, but like I'm not going to set post multiple videos of me going 150 miles an hour every single day. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, and the platform doesn't like that anyway, so mm-hmm. it's fine. Um, but yeah, so I'll post the same exact videos on TikTok that I do on Instagram, and Instagram does like 20 times better. Sure. So, but what about YouTube? If you're doing longer than a minute, isn't that a point for YouTube? Because you can yeah. can you still only do one minute? So yeah, for YouTube, on for YouTube, I think it's only a minute for for the for shorts. shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. I mean, for full length content, for where are your two minute videos even going? Um, so I have to chop them up. Oh, okay. Which I which I also kind of hate because yeah. here's the thing too. It's like I we were, before we started this whole podcast, I'm like I might I might blabber and yap about random shit. Yeah, sure. So like I have a lot of stuff to say. Yeah. When when I'm shooting a video, and so. In the back of my mind, it's always like, okay, I have a minute and I have to say this shit. And then I talk for 12 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, then, even with the show, like the vast majority of people who will see this will see a random clip. Yep. That's just how it is. Yep. The vast majority of people who see anything from Joe Rogan saw a clip. It right. doesn't matter that he's the most successful one and he gets however millions of people that listen yeah. to the full length. There are way more people, people that listen. see the clips. That's just yep. kind of how it is. Yep. So it's like, so yeah, I, but I mean, it's fine though, because it, that means I have 12 minutes of footage to t- chop up and and you know post wherever yeah so so youtube youtube shorts it's a minute instagram reels it's a minute and a half and tiktok you can post as long i think it's up to 10 minutes oh okay so that's why i wish that TikTok my, was better, that my yeah. tiktok was doing better do you just keep the same exact clip then and then go to all three like do you just try because i knew somebody else i forget who i was talking to but they would just make all their videos one minute because uh-huh. youtube shorts could only be one minute, one minute and they didn't want to do a separate one for instagram and a separate like they would just yeah. max their thing out at one minute yeah no i i usually create three separate cuts oh god yeah i mean it doesn't take that long it takes a long time it does but (laughs) once you get used to it get to it get used to the the routine it's not terrible sure so so with the tiktok one i don't have to worry as much because i have i know i have 10 minutes yeah so it's like if it it goes for two minutes two and a half minutes whatever so let's talk about goals you uh you're right now you're making money you have an an agency you obviously still can shoot as much as you want like Mm -hmm. where do you actually want to be in a year you're going to be continuing to grow your social media because again it's personal brand like if you have a a large uh, social media as much as social media sucks the life out of you because it does for everybody everyone i know who's even big on social media hates social media it sucks yeah it's not fun it's a constant comparison and pissing contest and it makes everyone so fucking sad yeah dude even (laughs) the people who are crushing it on it still feel horrible about not only that but then they have all these people who are judging them for it just yep the whole thing you get the haters but it's a it's a means to an end right like if you grow a big enough instagram following or whatever the thing is that you're on that that's what allows you to do the things you want to do such as travel and ride motorcycles or go fly to this place and take photos for free for this thing just because you want to that's what yeah. allows those things so yeah. you're obviously going to be working on growing that right but what are your goals for like a year besides growing the social um so for a year so i've kind of sw- for, with my company Zhang media i've kind of switched gears there too yeah. so before it was a lot of clientels that were like brick and mortar i had to go to the location to, to do shoots and and work with them which i which i love doing i do yeah. um and i still work with a few around the area but like i said that kind of burnt me out especially having to drive places and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So 
so I kind of switched gears in 2024 to make my agency kind of primarily like 99% online now. Okay. So now it's mainly like web design, um, social media design and strategy, creative to strategy. And a lot of like companies that I don't have to be at their physical there. location in order to, to work with them. We're talking about maximizing time, right? right you don't yep. want to waste the hours driving there when right. you could work with four, four times Whereas as many like, people. You know, cause now yeah. I can, I can work on my own personal brand half right. the day and then work in my agency the rest of the day. Right. So I, I have a lot more time management now and a lot more freedom there. Sure. So, so now that's where, so in a year, I mean, I'd still probably, that's probably what I'd still be doing. Yeah. Um, and hopefully growing a little bit more also. Um, Are you looking to do more photos still or not really? Um, is that just on pause for the moment? It's kind of on pause. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I love photo photography. Yeah. That, that's my thing. I mean, it, how it, many fancy cars can you take photos many, of? <laughs> yeah, right, right. And how many, you know, unless I'm traveling, you know, every other right, week. You're too. limited. You grew, outgrew this area, went to Minneapolis, kind of like yep. did what you could there. And then there. I, I went to Phoenix and met a lot of people there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I kind of outgrew it in a way. Um, but yeah, I mean... The going primarily web based, online based has also allowed me to grow my client base. So yeah. it's allowed me to work with different other different companies too. Sure. So so primarily I was automotive. Um so a lot of like automotive detailing companies and stuff like that. Yeah. Um or like aftermarket parts companies I worked with. But now it's my portfolio is kind of more it has a lot more vi- variety now. Yeah, sure. I guess. So it's like it's not only just cars now. Yeah. So recently, I I started working with a new drink company, uh, a new to market drink company. So we're gonna be shooting some promo content for them. Cool. Uh, commercials and stuff like that. So it's it's kind of like a, a, it, like you're saying, like not pigeonholing yourself. Right? Yeah. It makes so, it more interesting. Even it makes if it that's not your thing specifically, you're into. It's something different. So right. It, it and it's it like fresh. even 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 then, like even if I I branch off and all into all these other other industries, uh, I still have my personal brand. That's yeah. that's still. My well, passions. like I said, the, the biggest thing for me is having the, the freedom to kind of put my time where it's calling me at that moment, right? right. Like, yep. it would be best for me if I stuck with one thing and just like, boom. But yep. for me, I would hate it if all I did was sit there and edit short YouTube shorts like I have been for the last like month all and a half it. for my <laughs> show. If that's all I yeah. did, I would get burnt out super fast. Yep. But I can go, well, I'm going to go paint some shoes for Jaren today. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Which like, those I can were just, awesome, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I might have Shameless you. plug. I might have to have you make me some. Dude, yeah. <laughs> but, but I mean, by having that, it's like, cool. Now I have these yeah. different avenues, depending on what's calling me at that right. time. Yeah. I and, can put the energy That's there. a great way to, to segue into, uh, did you ever watch my stuff when I was working uh, with Tractor Central and John Deere? I, not, I can't recall it, but you consume so much content these days. That's true. You know what I mean? Just scrapped. scrolling through. Yeah. So for, for a period of time last year, uh, for, I don't know, three or four months, yeah. I was working with Tractor Central, which is a John Deere dealership in Wisconsin. Cool. Yeah, it seems weird. Like, it doesn't, is weird. It doesn't fit, but okay. It doesn't fit at all. Yeah. But like you're saying, that it's the it was the calling at the time. Mm-hmm. So I got this opportunity, and I'm like, sure. Like, at at this time, I was at at that ceiling of the, the automotive stuff. I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't not want to do it. It's just I'm burnt out. Yeah, sure. I need, I need to figure out something different that I can still be creative in. That's not cars. Right. I need, I just need, I just need to break away from cars. Totally. And then it just at the perfect moment, Tractor Center was like, Hey, can you, um, help us with our social media yeah. and take photos of tractors? I'm like, sure, I mm. guess. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, and the beautiful thing is when you start doing something random, like totally different, yeah. you see what works for that. And that's what gives you juices to want, like creative juices to work on something right. else where you're like this thing that I did that worked for this, I never considered doing yeah. for this other thing. But now it opens up those doors. Like the best thing you can do creatively when you hit a block, in my opinion, is just go do something go else. Do something else. Yeah. yeah that's and what it was, get it, going. it was, it was, fu- it was really fun though for me. And I learned a new industry and yeah. it, I was also able to bring my knowledge from automotive photography into, into the tractor world. Right and or agriculture industry yeah. if we want to be more specific yeah sure but uh so it was it was fun to kind of take what i know from automotive photography and apply it to that yeah to these big machines that that i actually ended up falling in love with i think they're super cool yeah, sure. <laughs> technology yeah. wise yeah um so it was cool to to see them be very impressed with like the type of photos i was taking too because they're like they haven't seen that they're like how are you making tractors look epic yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know. Right. I'm just using what I know. And like, so I had a drone too that I was doing flyovers cool. of, of, you know, combines and stuff like that. Yeah. And then one of the photos that I took of a tractor at one of the dealerships during a sunset, 
John Deere themselves actually ended up using as their cover photo for their Facebook page. Oh, sick. Which has like cool. millions of followers. By right. It. Yeah. Yeah. So, and I didn't know that at the time. So I like got home and I went on Facebook and I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's my photo. Like John Deere reposted it, whatever. And then my friend was like, dude, that's their cover photo. And I was like, I like looked back. I'm like, no shit. Yeah. I'm like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. And so, and like they tagged me and everything. And then uh, on LinkedIn, which also, in my opinion, is a very underrated social media. It is. It's just hard to want it's to hard, it's put hard though. energy into it's, more. It's more, it's more professional. It's, it's more yeah. business. But yeah. I've actually actually met a lot of contacts and built a pretty big network on LinkedIn also. Yeah. So one of the community managers at John Deere Corporate reached out to me. And they're like, hey, we love this photo. And yeah. we want to send you a gift. Like They're like, we yeah. just want to send you something to say thanks. I'm yeah, because like, they didn't pay for that photo to be nope, used that way. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, sure. Like, here's, here's, here's the address. And yeah. so they sent me a really cool, like, I'll send you like a picture of it later. Yeah. Like a John Deere box Sick. with a, with a cap, um, a backpack that's John Deere branded, like a really nice oh, backpack. Cool. It was a, it was a North Face backpack. It's like a $250 backpack Dope. with a John Deere logo on it. And then a, a John Deere Yeti nice. and like a thank you card. And it was like super cool. Yeah. It was just cool to have a company like that recognize my work. Right. Like that's just like eight, 10 year old me's like, what? Dude, like, that's, that's what that's, it's like working with Quick Trip. Yeah, like I'm yeah, working right? with Quick Trip yeah. these days, and me, I, I was like, oh, I want to go do some stuff that's like not just posting Quick Trip because mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, I don't know, it's not fun to do that, right? Yeah. But I was talking to Chris Cruzy because we kind of become friends a little bit because we, I did another interview with him, or whatever. Yeah, and he works with them too, and I was like, Chris, what do you think about just like doing a content day instead? Like instead of just like us posting a picture of something we got at quick trip like well yeah like what if we hung out and just like did fun stuff right and he was like yeah let's do that yeah so i got approval from quick trip to just like let us kind of like do stuff together rather right. than like separately so we went um i went up to his place went into the quick trip in Barron, yeah. and we shot like five different videos we just put out the first one yesterday yeah hilarious and one. so yeah. much fun <laughs> yeah. like there's a way to make like your work stuff your work there's a way fun. to make it way more fun i agree yeah yeah so it's like Oh, I don't know what I was going to go well, off Well, so you on, got but. like the, the John Deere gear. John Deere, what yeah. made me think of it is because I now have a bunch of Quick Trip swag. Yeah. Which is like kind of dope, dude. Like, yeah, I don't know yeah. when I'm going to wear it, but it's kind of rad. Well, yeah. It's like it's like with the John Deere stuff. Like, no, it doesn't fit my personal brand or life at all, but it's right. just cool. Yeah. And well, like for I, some, a brand I rock the John Deere backpack forever. and I drink out of my John Deere Yeti every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and it's just brands so. that like you've like you've known about since forever. So the fact that they know about you right. is pretty rad. And the fact that there's big like big brands like that, because they're not all like that. Nope. But the fact that there are big brands like that that realize like, oh, what's working right now for marketing and everything is working with the community. Yep. Like let's find people let's that are in people. our zone that Smaller are doing cool things. Are, yeah. Right. And partner right. with them. The brands yep. that are doing that are the ones that are crushing it right killing now. it yeah yeah and so that that brings me into the motorcycle stuff again because so my helmet sponsor yeah uh castle x they're actually based out in green bay oh sick I didn't so, know. in wisconsin there's a motorcycle helmet company yep so wow so that's the other thing and, and you were saying earlier how you like to kind of work with smaller brands yeah um so it's like with the motorcycle community everyone kind of wears the same stuff right um it's like agv showy you know that's those are kind of like the two big helmet companies that every yeah, okay. every motorcycle influencer wears and like don't get me wrong they're fucking awesome helmets they're like super cool looking helmets yeah expensive as shit sure yeah but like, it's like a status thing kind it, of it, it basically is a status thing yeah. and here's the other thing too is like a lot of the helmets that these guys wear are track helmets so sure. I, i'm not sure how versed you are in helmets helmet tech but no i wear a helmet when <laughs> i ride my harley but yeah I, like that's it yeah so like a track helmet is a track helmet a street helmet is a street helmet so yeah. People are always complaining. They're like, dude, my, my AGV Pista is so loud on the freeway. I'm like, it's because it's a track helmet, dude. Yeah, it's not meant it's, for it's them. The, the, the company doesn't care about the comfort features. They care about the safety and the light the lightweightness of it. Right. I'm like, if you get a street helmet, it's going to be a lot more quiet because that's what it's meant for. Sure. And like the ratings are different. So there's a Snell rating, which is for the track. And then yeah. there's the DOT and ECE rating, which are for street helmets, which right. mine is for. Um, and then a lot of these... Track helmets don't have cutouts either for intercoms, oh, okay. which for, for like a cardo, so I can pick up my phone calls and listen to music, yeah, which sure. is also another sponsor of mine. Cool. Um, so you have to, you, you buy this $1,500 track helmet and then you have to cut out into the foam into in the inside so you can install your cardo. Yeah, sure. Whereas all these street companies, they already know that people are going to put intercoms in them, so they have cutouts already. They well, it's nice when you work with them like more yeah. personally like that because you can give that feedback and say, exactly. this is what people actually want to right. do and, and so, they're not so stubborn that they can't do it's it. It's nice too because they actually take our feedback into consideration right. too so yeah. so we do we're doing like r&d with them yeah. um to develop their next generation of helmets like what we can improve what we'd like to see um so me and my buddy are working on that 
Um, but it's just it's just cool to work, for me to work with a company that's not only local yeah. but just that I mean they're completely new to yeah. to the street street motorcycle scene. Also, they're they're primarily most people know Castle X for like snowmobile, sure, um, and like more winter oriented sports. Yeah, and so they're pretty fresh into the street scene. So it's it's my it's gonna be my job this season to help them build up their street line which sure um it's pretty cool though because they actually put me on the cover of their summer catalog this year sick so, nice well and so coming from killer. somebody who like it's not like you grew up like doing like right racing motorcycles professionally yeah you're just a fan of motorcycles i just like motorcycles. so the I fact like that you're a fan of them and now all of a sudden you can make money doing stuff with them and again yeah. you don't have to that's right. the other big caveat to it yep. is pretty dope dude so anyone who looks down upon that like Honestly, like you're probably just jealous, whatever. Well, like, that's, that's what I would say. It's like, like, it's like some people might look at me as like a sellout or like. You would sell out too. Like people who say like, that, like, yeah. dude, that you're it's like, it's such a cop you, out, dude. dude. It's yeah. a cop out. People who call Tony Hawk out for like, yeah. you know, doing McDonald's ads. Dude, if you got paid what you got paid for that, you would yeah. do it too. You, yeah, if you absolutely got, yeah. would. If you got paid a million dollars for a 20 second ad, I'm I dude, willing to bet you would take Bam it. Bam Margera <laughs> got paid a million dollars for his Axe body spray ad. Like it was, and so did Ryan Sheckler. Were they cringy? Yeah. Would I do it? Probably. Dude, for a lot less money yeah. than a million dollars, and so would you. Like, let's well, not like, lie and, about and it. And honestly, too, it's like if you want to call me a sellout, that's fine. But like, if I was actually a sellout, I'd be taking all these other stupid brand deals well, that have, and have no, have nothing to do with my brand. Sure, and they're a sellout for whatever so. company they work for currently. Yeah, you know, and so. most people don't love the company they work for. Sorry, that's just kind of how it works. That's well, just how it is. <laughs> well, let's uh, just because we're kind of hitting on a long time timeline here, we should do a part two at some point. Um, yeah, I'd love to, but. Thank you so much for coming over. Of course. How can Thank people, if me. they want to support you moving forward, what's the best way? Tell them where they can contact you if they had further questions, like what's the platforms they should follow on or whatever. Um, honestly, like I said, right now, Instagram's hot. Yeah. Instagram is extremely hot. So just follow me on Instagram. Um, I have a, a link in my bio that has all of my links to all my other social channels on there. Sure. As well as all of the, all of the companies and I Coops work with. And Coobs is K, is it zeros you use? Yeah. Yeah. So, so K00BS. K00BS because some bot random account has coobs with zeros. Yeah. And I've messaged him. I'm like, hey, can we swap usernames? Yeah. I've emailed Instagram. I'm like, hey, can we swap usernames because this account's not active? Yeah, they active. don't do anything. And they won't. So, yeah. I mean, it's fine. It's, yeah. It still looks fine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can follow me on there and, you know, keep track of my shenanigans. Yeah. But uh, yeah instagram <laughs> cool well so. you can find me on instagram at passion pod you can find me everywhere if you google passion pod it'll pop up youtube's the new platform that i'm putting a bunch of energy into and way too much of my money and time and everything Your youtube's um, doing great though dude yeah at the cost of my mental health of staring at a computer for six weeks straight now which will probably continue until uh springtime but anyway so you can find me on all those on passionpod.org there's some like merchandise and that type of stuff there's a patreon so if you want to pay five bucks a month you can get access to early episodes and all that type of stuff and you can help make this whole thing possible and interacting on social media in general like if you just like and share stuff that makes a huge difference and that's how i can get uh different sponsors that then pay me so that way you don't have to and i can keep doing this it's pretty rad So yeah, thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you for joining us for this episode of The Passion Pod. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. We'll see you soon.